Hello everyone, it's your bud. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the ultraviolet cores from the Lanterns of DC and what I believe they truly are empowered by. I don't think their power has been fully described in a way that satisfies me, so I came up with my own theories. Now we're first going to read through some of the wikis and then I'll be getting into my thoughts and fan theories. Now let's start with the Oath of the Ultraviolet Core. By shield of day and shield of night, we feed and grow beyond all sight. Your darkest self shall be our night. Wield the sword of unseen light. So the ultraviolet core is the lantern core of the unseen light, part of the invisible emotional spectrum. The heart of the core is a living phantom galaxy powered by a sentient sun called Umbrax. Umbrax moves unseen through space, drawn towards planets where self-destructive forces are the strongest. It surrounds these places, animating them with its energy, and then pulls them into its galaxy, adding it and its inhabitants to the Ultraviolet Lantern core. The very first recruit of the new core would be John Stewart of Earth. Knowing John, Sinestro believed he would have an affinity for the darker aspects of the unseen light. Sinestro used John to draw Umbrax to the Soul Star system and Earth and its inhabitants. As the ultraviolet entity is drawn to the most self-destructive populaces which inhabit reality at the time. Now I need to quickly mention, Umbrax was actually like jailed up by Sinestro. Sinestro knew of this really, really powerful force from his old days of adventuring throughout the universe. And he had like trapped this thing. However, during the event when the source wall fell, Umbrax was made free and then it began to roam again. So having Sinestro be the one to make Jon Stewart an ultraviolet lantern is because Sinestro was trying to once again capture and jail Umbrax. The rest of the core is controlled by Umbrax, rather than each individual member controlling their own emotions. However, this is not always the case. Sinestro found a way to bind and isolate the ultraviolet power into himself using his original costume with linen fibers that can distill the energy of Umbrax without succumbing to its thrall. And this ancient costume with linen fibers that help distill and infuse the energy, it's something he created or found during his old adventuring days, some sort of ancient power of energy diffusing threat or maybe of an ancient makeup of materials yet unknown to most of the galaxy and universes. Jon Stewart was also able to overcome the influence of Umbrax and wields the ultraviolet energy through his own force of will and confronting the negative emotions he held deep down. Now, unlike most lantern cores which use physical rings, the ultraviolet core brands its members with power ring tattoos. Now let's discuss what the powers are. Many of these powers are shared by many of the other lantern cores in DC, but some of them are unique. So there's the ultraviolet energy conduit. The rings can use ultraviolet energy supplied by Umbrax and the ambient negative emotional energy from the user and their surroundings, which takes the form of purple or violet light. There's also ultraviolet energy blasts. The ring can be used to fire blasts of ultraviolet energy or create weapons such as projectiles from them. The ring can project beams of force powered by the hate, shame, and or bloodlust of the user. There's also energy constructs. The rings can form constructs of ultraviolet energy. The primary offensive function for the power ring is forming the wearer's thoughts into physical constructs. This is shared throughout all of the lanterns, although this differs as the ultraviolet lanterns fuel theirs through the wearer's hidden, primitive impulses. An ultraviolet lantern can create any particular items or construct that they can imagine as long as they have the appropriate amount of negative emotion necessary to will it into existence. The constructs are made out of ultraviolet energy, which is a tangible form of pure negative emotion, and they exist only as long as an ultraviolet lantern is fueling it with their negative emotion. Items created by the rings are not indestructible and are only as powerful as the negative emotions of the ultraviolet lantern creating them. The type of constructs usually reflect the ring wearer's personality. And the single most awesome use of energy constructs was in something known as the blackout, a skill that allowed the person to will into existence their own inner demons. The blackout was just this surrounding, encompassing darkness filled with the inner demons of the being. It was one of the coolest things ever. Now there's also emotional empowerment. The ultraviolet power ring taps into primitive impulses of sentient beings to strengthen the ring user and their constructs. And there's also the negative emotion induction. Like Umbrax, wielders of the ultraviolet power ring can tap into the raw, cruel, destructive, and deadly parts of a target and bring them to the forefront. 
And this all ties into one thing that is very specific to the ultraviolet core, although shares similarity to the black core, and that is the ultraviolet infection. The ultraviolet power ring is capable of infecting others with the most hatefully self-destructive and primeval elements held deep within their hearts and minds. The ultraviolet power rings feed off the bloodlust and self-hatred of anyone they come into contact with, assimilating them into the ultraviolet lantern cause. Powerful wielders of the ring can infuse their targets with the ultraviolet power and bind them to their rings on a cellular level. And remember, the rings are a tattoo, so they essentially put a negative energy tattoo onto a person and then bring those negative energies into the forefront of the person's personality, thus taking over that person in a way, and then bind that person to the ring on a cellular level. There's just a few more powers here, including flight. By the manipulation of anti-gravitons and directed molecular movement, the ring allows the users to fly at incredible speeds and can open wormholes and spatial warps. The power ring grants its wearer access to wormholes in space, enabling the ring wielder to rapidly cut time and distance needed for transport. Black holes can be navigated by experienced ring wielders. And then there's the force field. The ring can create various force fields of various sizes and shapes to protect the wearer and others around them. Like the other lantern cores, the ultraviolet power ring is designed for operation in space. The ring creates a force field around the wearer, protecting them from the hazards of the void, including filtration of stellar radiation and microscopic particulate matter, which would ordinarily be fatal should the space debris strike the ring wielder at high speeds. Could you imagine microscopic particulate matter striking you at high speeds? Oh, that would just be like death in an instant. An atmosphere appropriate to the ring wielder's biology is created inside the force field. Body temperature is maintained and waste products are removed and gravitational stresses, which could cause injury are stabilized for the ring wielder. Theoretically, a ring wielder could use the ring as their sole source of life support. And in a similar manner to all other power rings, the ultraviolet power ring grants the user superhuman durability, superhuman stamina, and self-sustenance, one of the most understated but one of the most overpowered thing about the Green Lanterns. They can use it as self-sustenance, so I think that's really, really cool. And then the final power is material alteration. Like the other cores, the ultraviolet lantern's uniform is not made out of a fabric. It is created by the power ring. Most ultraviolet lanterns wear similar uniforms by default, all resembling the uniform used by Sinestro to manipulate the ultraviolet light of Umbrax. Now remember, Sinestro's uniform used some ancient artificed form of certain threads to diffuse the energy of Umbrax to make it so they couldn't gain control over him. However, some ultraviolet lanterns are able to adjust their uniforms to fit their own needs, as displayed very much by Sinestro, and they can fit it to their own needs, personalities, and whims, such as John Stewart was also able to do. So those are the powers of the ultraviolet core. However, it really, really bothered me. How could one thing, Umbrax, this dark being in the center of a phantom galaxy, manage to control such a powerful force? I don't think he truly could. I think he managed to gain control over it or manipulate it or somehow taint this actual force. I think this universal force, this invisible emotional energy spectrum that the ultraviolet lanterns can run on is actually something different. I think when they say negative, I don't think they mean bad or ill or so all of these things like drawing on negative emotions, hidden primitive impulses, all of this, you know, like primeval instincts. Uh, they could only exist as long as an ultraviolet lantern is fueling it with their negative emotion. Whenever I think of negative like that, it just didn't seem right. It didn't seem to fit what the core actually is. And then I realized that when they say negative, they could be meaning something different. Negative meaning opposite. When you take a photo and then you take a photo negative, you have the opposite. And what is the opposite of emotion? To me, that would be instinct. So instinct and emotion are very, very similar, though very, very different. And I think instinct very much describes this invisible emotional spectrum that the ultraviolet power rings draw their power from. And I think this instinct could be something that was corrupted or gained control or tainted or manipulated by Umbrax. So I think Umbrax's dark sun managed to somehow gain control over the emotional spectrum of instinct. However, I think Sinestro managed to free himself from Umbrax's control, and instinct itself is what powers the ultraviolet power rings. Instinct itself is the invisible emotional spectrum. Now I'll describe it all to you in one very, very simple example. So imagine you were walking along a cliff and you stumbled, and before you knew it, your hand had reached out and grasped for the edge of a wall and balanced yourself. 
Now, the ability of your body to instinctually balance itself and right itself and reach for a wall before your emotional state of fear could drive you to do so, I don't think that's a bad thing. However, I would describe that as losing control. So there's the ultraviolet infection, which is one of the core things of this, which was the fact that the ring is capable of infecting others with the most hatefully self-destructive and primeval elements held deep within their hearts and minds. And they're able to infuse their targets with ultraviolet power and bind them to the rings on a cellular level. So I would describe this as they say here, the bloodlust of self-hatred of anyone they come into contact with, assimilating them and infecting them with this ultraviolet light. I would consider that as mob mentality. So a human's instincts are very different than a mob's instincts. The mob instinct, the masses, the mob mentality. I would consider mob mentality instinct rather than emotion, although it is emotion, but this twisted form. So I'll now read through the ultraviolet infection again and think of this in the form of like mob mentality. So UV power rings feed off the bloodlust and self-hatred of anyone they come into contact with, assimilating them into the ultraviolet lantern cause. Powerful wielders of the ring can infuse their targets with the ultraviolet power and bind them to the rings on a cellular level. So if you consider powerful wielders to be powerful public speakers, whipping people and mobs into a frenzy and then assimilating them into the ultraviolet lantern cause, you can sort of see how like it's the control over instinct and emotion. Yes, technically it is eliciting emotion in others, but I think it is more drawing on the instinct of others to, I don't know, bind into mobs or masses, all of these things. So again, the instinct of saving yourself from falling off of a cliff isn't necessarily bad, but it completely removes any emotional response you had. So this whole thing about hidden primitive impulses or prime evil urges or things like that, I think those are instinct, which aren't necessarily evil. Those can be very evil. They can be very destructive. And when in a very mob sense, they can be self-destructive. I think that it's something that can actually be the most positive thing. As a disabled person, you don't know how many times my impulses of grabbing myself when I started to stumble or writing myself when I began to fall. Those instincts have saved me from great injury. And I value instinct. I think instinct is something that fuels and drives humanity in a very positive way. So if I put my hand into a fire, it wouldn't be my my emotions that would go, oh, this is hot. Emotionally, I feel bad about it. Therefore, I'm going to take my hand out of the fire. So before I could even register the feelings and how I would emotionally react to them, the instinct would draw my hand away from the flame. And I don't consider the instinct of pulling hands away from a fire or or writing yourself when you stumble on a high cliff. I don't see those instincts and those takeovers of human behavior as something bad. I see that as something positive. The instinct to jump out of the way of a fast falling object. The instinct that even some blind people have to move when they see what looks like a shadow of a snake on a wall. I've seen like studies online where it said that like even people that are blind, if there's a movement of a snake nearby and they're blind, they can somehow still register it through some instinct. Now that might be completely false, but that's something that I thought was really, really cool. So I wouldn't consider like the instinct of moving from the slithering or like moving of a spider. If you saw a spider or a snake and your body just instinctually moved, that's a positive. That's not a bad thing. You wouldn't go, oh, well, the instinct took over my body and therefore I wasn't in control of myself and therefore it's a bad thing to not be in control. That can be a positive. Many of the most positive aspects of what makes humans humans is actually our instinct and not our emotional state. State. So this invisible emotional spectrum, I believe, is actually instinct. And I think it was corrupted by Umbrax, who managed to somehow gain control over it. So again, that negative isn't negative meaning bad. That negative is the negative meaning opposite. So there's a positive charge and a negative charge. There's a photo and there's a negative of a photo. There's emotion and then the negative or the opposite of that, I believe, is instinct. And the fact that ultraviolet infection or the lowering to a primitive or instinctual state is actually something that can really, really well describe mob mentality. How when you're in a mob and you lower it to this more instinctual state, you then begin to react and plan and act in a way that suits the mob. And therefore you try to get more people into it. And it is this ultraviolet or 
instinctual infection, you could say. So I don't think that infection is necessarily bad unless the powerful wielders creating this infection use it for ill purpose. However, uh, there's a really, really, really cool thing in Green Lantern where the entire Earth becomes a white lantern. That's right, Earth itself becomes a white lantern. Now I could be messing this up, but I believe Sinestro made every single human on Earth into an ultraviolet lantern and therefore bound them with this ultraviolet infection. However, I think that this was the most positive thing and I think the thing that saved Earth and made it a white lantern was the collective instinct of humanity, the species of humanity having a collective instinct to save itself from the controlling force of Umbrax. So all of humanity were made into ultraviolet lanterns and they sensed this controlling force that Umbrax held over the negative emotional spectrum and they noticed that they weren't in control of their own instincts, of their own self. So as an instinctual reaction, the entire species bound together and Earth itself was made into a white lantern which I think is super super awesome probably one of the most awesome things aside from like so there's the uh, blackout feature where someone can manifest their inner demons using these ultraviolet things which I think is cool and then there's the exact opposite where all of humanity was bound together by one like humanity wide instinct and this instinct created Earth into a white lantern and therefore was able to protect it from Umbrax so I think that's really cool and I think that shows that Umbrax was just using the invisible emotional spectrum. I think that Umbrax was just taking control over it, manipulating it, and that the invisible emotional spectrum still exists behind everything. And it is the negative of the emotional spectrum, but negative meaning opposite of like a positive charge. So while the emotional energy spectrum is the positive charge, I believe the opposite of that is the invisible energy spectrum, which is instinct. So the fact that the most hatefully self-destructive primeval elements held deep within hearts and minds is what can fuel the ultraviolet core. It is also the thing that can save you from your most primeval instinct is to pull your hand away from a fire or to move or to like draw your hand back from when you see a snake or a spider or to quickly jump out of the way of a falling object you didn't even register emotionally was there. So instinct I think can be very powerful and very useful and can be one of the things that makes humans such a strong being. So whenever I see some of my most personal favorite characters ever, those characters often have a strong tie or a strong awareness of their instinct. And my most favorite characters are ones who not necessarily over rely, but are aware and are accepting of their instincts. My most favorite characters are those who never either block out or are overcome by their instincts, yet are those that can rely upon them with full trust. So yes, instinct can be the most awful thing. I don't think a nightmare or your inner demons are necessarily emotions as much as they are a human instinct to make people face their fears and the emotions those create can be on the emotional spectrum but I think the instinct of creating a nightmare for humans I think that instinct that we all have to dream our dreams that's an instinct so manifesting your inner demons your inner dreams those are manifesting your inner instincts I believe and there and though there is an emotional connection to your most treasured dream or your most feared nightmare I believe manifesting those is something that can be done using this instinct visible emotional spectrum, the spectrum of instinct. So what did you think of this video? Do you think that the invisible emotional spectrum is something else or do you think that instinct would be something really, really cool? The exact opposite, very primitive, very primeval, sometimes bringing out hate, shame, or bloodlust, yet instinct can be the thing that can make the blackout possible, manifesting the inner demons of a person, or even can be the thing that can manifest the most treasured dreams of a being. And the fact that ultraviolet infection is very similar to the fact of like what mob mentality becomes, I think is very, very cool. And I believe that Umbrax managed to gain control over this mob mentality that instinct creates in people. So as I mentioned, some of my most favorite characters ever are those who are aware of instinct. I don't know why, but I think Aragorn just came into mind. Aragorn is a human, but he's also like aware of his instinct and he'll he won't block it out, yet he won't necessarily be so human that he will block out his emotions, yet he won't necessarily be so instinctual that he won't be a civilized human. There's a good balance that some characters can maintain between their emotions and their instincts. And I think this line is what makes an ultraviolet lantern so cool. 
So thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Do you think the ultraviolet cores are actually run on instinct like I believe, or do you think they're truly run by this dark, powerful, sentient sun known as Umbrax in the heart of a living phantom galaxy? It's all up to you what you believe, but I believe that the negative or invisible emotional spectrum is actually instinct. So thanks for watching everyone. Leave this video a like if you want some more DC stuff or I don't know, Green Lantern or any Lantern core or any comic book stuff in the future. I'm happy to make more videos like this. Subscribe for daily videos. I make at least one video every single day. And sorry this was so all over the place, but I mentioned the other day that I was trying to reset my sleep schedule. I've been going to bed at like six or seven in the morning and sleeping till lunch. Well, last night I went to bed at two in the morning and only woke up at 5.30 in the afternoon. So apparently I really need to catch up on a lot of sleep. So there's probably just gonna be some shorter videos in the next few days. But yeah, if you want some more videos, subscribe for this channel. There's at least one video every single day and leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching.